being tested against the T distribution, and you get a T value to um, to uh, report against. So with a variance of 30 in in the in the first uh, set of data and a variance of 22.72 in the second set of data. Uh, a sample size of 173 and a correlation of 0.88 between the two uh, rows of data, uh, you get a T value of 3.8120 and a degrees of freedom of 171. And then to calculate the significance of the T value, I haven't actually incorporated that in the spreadsheet, but if you click on this link, it'll send you to a uh, very easy, easily used um, uh, web page that allows you to calculate the, t, the significance level associated with a T value. I've also got the uh, second option here to report it in what is more frequently reported, the Pittman-Morgan test, although infrequently reported when it is reported, it's usually reported as RDS and it's actually a correlation uh, and the statistical significance of the correlation is tested and I'm giving you a link to do that too but the long and the short of it is I prefer uh, the, the formula that are used to actually test this yield virtually identical results uh, within um, uh, decimal places and uh, you can in my opinion just use the T T, um, T test to evaluate the difference between the variances that are correlated with each other. Now, in this blog, as I mentioned, I'll give you, I give some references that you can use to specify that you did the Pittman-Morgan test and which uh, technique you used, uh, either the Gardner uh, formula, uh, which I found in that book, or the uh, Snedekor or the Cochrane test, which is probably much more well known. Um, I'll note that uh, in addition to testing I think the reason why I'm more interested in the um, testing of correlated variances for statistical significant differences is not just for testing the assumption of homogeneity of variance in the paired t-test. It's also because it also has relevance in its own right, knowing that there's variability differences between two correlated sets of data can be interesting uh, in psychology when you're looking at the treatment effectiveness of individual differences. So that means sometimes you apply a treatment to a group of people at time one and then you measure them at time two. What you'll find is that the variability in the dependent variable is usually much greater at time two. And usually that tells you that the effectiveness of the treatment is uh, differently uh, effective across individuals. If it was the same, if it had the e if it had equal impact on all individuals from time one to time two, the variance would not change from time one to time two. So actually seeing changes in variance actually tells you something meaningful. It's not just some kind of assumption testing, which is not as interesting as finding meaningful differences. In chemistry, another example is when two suppliers are giving you um, an element or, or some kind of um, molecule or whatever it is that they're giving you at different concentration levels and you want to see that the variability in supplier one is actually different than the variability in supplier two and that could be informative for you as well and I also mentioned the example in finance where you want to test the difference between an index and then a manager uh, and their investment performance is variable the variance of that investment performance across years um, that's a paired sample t-test. Even though it's not time one, time two data, it's still paired um, across years. And you can find that there are differences in the variances that are statistically significant, and that can be also very interesting. Anyway, I hope you've uh, learned something important uh, about uh, variances and how you can test them, and I'll catch you next time.